All right, let's continue with part two of the video. So in part two, we're going to learn the agglomerative hierarchical clustering. It's also very, very easy, right? This is another unsupervised clustering. The algorithm is really simple to learn and really simple to implement. In general, with agglomerative, uh, with hierarchical clustering, you can split them into agglomerative and divisive. Agglomerative, essentially, you build it up into the cluster. Divisive, essentially, you break it down into the points. Well, we're going to focus on this one today. So the overview of the algorithm, again, is really, really easy. You want to start again with assuming that you have k clusters. Once you have k clusters with n points, we assume every single point is a cluster. So now we have n clusters. And then we, over time, merge them. Okay? And by merging them, we slowly form the cluster. That's the general idea. So once you initialize such that every single point is a cluster, we find all possible distances, every possible distance. And then identify the two points, the two points, or in this case, two clusters that are closest to each other. So over here, they have a distance 1, they have a distance 1, they have a distance of 1. In those cases, you can just pick one of them. Okay. So in this case, I'm just going to pick this cluster. And voila. Measure the distance between all pairs. In this example, we have several possibilities. EF, FD, EF, FD, and AB. Right. In those cases, we can just pick AB. Or you could have picked any one of them. It would have been fine. Now, once you have this cluster, right, this is still a cluster, right? You now go do the same thing again and essentially identify the two clusters that are closest to each other. And in this particular case, in this particular case, E and F are going to be closest. Or you could have picked this one too, but idea is the same. So now you have this cluster and this cluster. And then you want to find a distance again. Now, how do you count the distance? Well, you can count it from the center. So let's say you want to measure the distance between this cluster and this cluster. So you can measure based on the closest distance, the farthest distance, or you can just pick the center. Traditionally, we, we use the center, so, so it makes more sense. So you calculate distance, and you calculate distance, and it turns out this distance is shorter. So you now form that whole thing into a cluster. So now you have this, this whole thing is a cluster, and this is a cluster. And now you're going to see, you're going to do again to find a distance between here and here versus distance here to here. Well, obviously, this is shorter. So this is going to be yet another cluster. And once you've reduced down to two clusters, then it's over. That's it. That's it. So this, as you can see, the algorithm, like I said, is just calculating distance over and over again and picking the cluster that gives you the closest distance. OK, so when you use num uh, sklearn, it is also really simple. It's just one line, and you say that it's three clusters, and you will automatically separate them into three clusters. Okay, Over here, I draw them out. Now, once you have the results, once you have the clustering results, right? so whether it's agglo agglomerative or it's k-means, k-means, right? Notice how after you run k-means, you can get the labels out, which looks like this. So there are three clusters. It gives you the labels, and it tells you the center of each one of the cluster. So, so here's the label. How do you know how well you've done? Well, you can measure the accuracy, compare this to the true label. 0, 2, 1, right? So you can measure the accuracy. But it's actually better to measure this thing called the mutual information. So 
So how do you measure how well you did for the clustering if you have the, la the true label to test it out? Well, like I said, let's say this is the predicted and this is the true. And notice the only difference was this one. Now, if you were to calculate the accuracy, then you can get the accuracy, which is 90%. But in clustering algorithms, we normally like to do normalized neutral information. This is more of a standard. And you can see why. Let me explain to you. Well, when you do clustering, here's the predicted, you could get 0, 2, 1, 3, 3. So it's saying that this is a cluster, this is a cluster, this is a cluster, and this is a cluster. Well, what's the difference between calling this cluster 1 or calling this cluster 1? It doesn't really matter, right? Therefore, therefore, if you have switched the label when you are doing clustering, you want to make sure your accuracy is able to take that into account. So notice, when you do normalized mutual information, it's 100%, right? Because this match, this match, this flipped, but that's okay. Flipping is okay. Whereas, if you had used accuracy, you would have said 40% of it is wrong. So this is not true because like, you didn't really care in the first place that the label was flipped anyways. Okay, so, so at this point, I want you to practice writing your own, your own code for k-means algorithm to essentially cluster the data on the right. Okay, so this is what you want to do. And you want to write k-means as well as the agglomerative clustering. See if you can do this. After that, you want to report normalized mutual information result, and then you want to plot your result out, right? You want to plot them out and make sure your clustering makes sense. If you are able to write this code here, then the next thing you want to try is to use the same code, but instead of on this simple data, you want to run it on the breast cancer data. So the breast cancer data, you can download it this way. Once you download it, try to run clustering. So it's binary, so it's one or zero. So you can run, run your own and see essentially whether you got the same results. So that's it for today. I'll see you next class.